Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dulasaur Island. This is a two-player card drafting, dice rolling, hand management game where you take the role of rival CEOs of dinosaur theme park companies. You'll be collecting DNA, creating dinosaurs, and building attractions, trying to become the most dominant theme park company. How do you become the most dominant theme park company and win the game? By having the most visitors after the final scoring. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components setup and how a round and turn work in Dulasaur Island. You have your main game board, your draft board, two company boards, eight DNA die, a dice bag, 20 player cubes, 10 for each player, visitor tokens, threat tokens, security tokens, lawsuit tokens, plot twists, a PR token, coins, and then the cards, you have your starter cards, your specialist cards, regular park cards, and AI cards. And then in the Extreme Edition, you have two more DNA die, you have more specialist cards, two temporary threat markers, and then tokens that go along with the specialist. So you have a dino token, market analyst token, and three research tokens. Now let's take a look at the setup for Dulasaur Island. Setup takes 12 steps. Step number one is to place the main board and your draft board in the center of the play area. Step number two is to place your DNA dice in the bag and give it to a randomly chosen first player. Step number three is to shuffle and stack your regular park cards and then reveal three in the card row. Step number four is to shuffle and stack your specialist cards. Step number five is to shuffle your plot twist tokens and select four at random and place them on your phase two board. Step number six, on the main board, you are going to place your PR token on the dark red location. Step number seven, you are going to create supplies of coins and modifier tokens off to the side of the play area. Step number eight is determine your game length. If you want a short game, then you'll play to 25, a medium game, 35, and then a long game, 45 visitors. So that indicates at the end of a round, if one of the players crosses that threshold, it would bring us into the final scoring. Step number nine, you're gonna select a company and the cubes of that company color. You will place a cube at zero for each of your DNA one for your threat and security, and then on the main board you'll place a cube at one excitement and five visitors. Step number 10, you're going to take your starting part cards, and then of those three cards you will choose one for your starting dinosaur, and one for your starting attraction. Step number 11, you are going to tuck the dinosaur that you chose into the top of your player board and the attraction that you chose into the bottom of your player board. Step number 12, you're going to keep the last of the starting cards in your hand to start the game. 
Now let's take a look at how a round and turn work in Dulasaur Island. Each round consists of four phases. Income, Draft, Build, and Visitors. Phase 1 is the Income Phase, where you gain coins and park cards. First, each player gains coins, which you will gain 3 plus 1 for each food attraction that you've built in your park, which are your red symbols in the bottom left corner of the attraction card. You also gain 2 coins for each of the yellow excitement levels that you have passed. Then you're going to draw park cards. In turn order, you are going to choose one card and then another card for each of the merchandise attractions you've built in your park. These are your yellow symbols in the bottom left corner. When choosing a card, you could choose from the face down deck or one of the face up cards. If you choose a face up card, you will replace that card immediately. Phase two is the draft phase where the first player will draw three specialist cards, place two of them on the specialist locations on the draft board, and discard the third card. Then the first player will draw five DNA dice, roll them, and then place them in any order on the draft board. Then starting with the second player, each player is going to choose between selecting a die, along with the plot twist benefit underneath, or a specialist card. Each player is going to make this decision three times, leaving either one specialist card or one die left. When drafting a die, you're going to move it down to the box below the plot twist token. When selecting a specialist card, you can take it for the benefit or discard it for the discard benefit located in the bottom left of the card. After you have three specialists next to your company board, you must discard one when getting another specialist. After you collect three specialists next to your company board, to get another specialist and use them for their benefit, you would have to discard one of your specialists that you currently have. When discarding this specialist, you would not gain the discard effect. If you had three specialists and you chose another specialist, you could discard it immediately to gain the discard effect. So in this case, the remaining item, the DNA die left, would move to the right, and then at the end of the round, each player will move up the threat level once on their company boards because of the red dot on the die. Phase three is the build phase. Both players will take all of their actions simultaneously. There are five types of actions that the players can take during this phase. The first action is to create a dinosaur. You would pay the DNA that is located at the top of the card. You would then tuck the card at the top of your player board and then increase the excitement level and the threat level that is located on the card. The second type of action is the build attraction. This is where you'll pay the coins in the top left corner of the attraction and then tuck it at the bottom of your company board. You would then gain an effect either immediately or in the next round. If you built a food attraction, you would gain a coin in the next round. If you built a merchandise attraction or the yellow symbol in the bottom left corner, you would gain a park card in the next round. And then if you built a ride attraction or the black symbol in the bottom left corner, you would gain the effect under the PR token immediately. So in this case, in the first round, you would gain two basic DNA of your choice. If there are two symbols on the card, you would gain that effect twice. The food and merchandise benefits will last for the remainder of the game. The third type of action is to mix DNA. This is where you will discard a part card and then convert DNA. You would convert either two basic DNA to gain one advanced, or you would go down on one advanced DNA to convert two of the basic. The fourth type of action is to sell DNA. You can sell two basic or one advanced DNA for one coin. The fifth type of action is to increase your security level. 
you would pay the cost next to the next level on the security track. So to increase from one to two, you would pay one coin, and then from two to three, you would pay two coins. And then any level after 10, you would pay four coins each. After everyone has taken their turns and are finished taking turns, we are ready to move on to phase number four which is the visitor phase. This phase has three steps. The first step is to compare your threat level and your security level. First, you increase your threat level based on the undrafted item on your draft board. So in this case, we would move up one on our threat level because the die has one red dot. And then we compare our security and threat levels. As long as your security level is greater than or equal to your threat level, then nothing happens. If your threat level was greater than your security level, then you would go down two times that difference on the visitor's track on the main game board. If this movement would put you below one on the visitor's track on the main game board, then you would gain a lawsuit and stay at one. The second step to this phase is to gain visitors. You will increase your visitor track the number of your excitement level. So if you were at excitement level one, then during this phase you would only move your visitor track cube up one spot. If you had an excitement level of six, you would move it up six spots, and so on. The third step is to choose a PR benefit. Starting with the person that is the lowest on the excitement level, you would choose a PR benefit on the track that is to the left of your PR token. The first person choosing can choose any spot to the left of the PR token, but the second person choosing this benefit can only choose spots to the left of the first choice. So in this case, if the purple player chose the first spot on the track, then the second player could not choose any PR benefit. That brings us to the end of the round. There are four steps to the end of each round. Step one is to discard your park cards down to your hand limit, which is three. Step two is to discard the specialist on the draft board and then place the DNA dice back in the bag. The third step is to move the PR token one space to the right. And the fourth step is to switch turn order and give the dice bag to the next player. And then rounds would continue on until one of the player's cubes on the visitor's track lands on or surpasses the particular level for the length of game that the players chose. So if we were playing a long game, as soon as someone reaches 45 or above, we would go into the final scoring. The final scoring has five steps that will adjust your location on the visitor track. Step one is to add the number of visitors, or the numbers in the stars, located on all of the dinosaurs that are in your park. Step two is to add all of the visitors printed on the attraction cards in your park. Step three is to score attraction sets. So for each set of ride, merchant, and food, you would gain four on the visitor's track. Step four is to check your specialist to see if they give any visitors at the end of the game. And then finally, step five is to adjust your visitor track with any lawsuits that you have. Each lawsuit will bring you down five on the visitor track. After the final scoring and each player has adjusted their number of visitors, whoever has the highest number of visitors has the most successful dinosaur theme park and wins Dulasaur Island.